morning everybody welcome back to uh, my channel I think this video is actually going to be a um, harvesting for market day and then I'm gonna take you guys with me to the farmers market because um, I remember before I started the farmers market working there I was looking on YouTube for videos you know what does it look like how do I set up who do I talk to like you know how do I set up my canopy and um, now I, I've been doing it for over a year so I have a good routine and um, I've got regular customers now which is awesome um, so basically um, I have to do uh, one thing before I can start um, setting up and making my rounds at the gardens and start picking things and that is getting my sunflower and peas into the um, into their flats I'm going to show you um, that they already have germinated and sprouted um, so I'm basically just gonna bring them out here, set up my flats, fill them with soil like I did in the last video with the cilantro, and that's it. All right, so these are the two seeds that I'll be sowing today. This one here is organic black oil sunflower. This is the size I like to put them in the tray. I have put them in there when they're longer and they still grow fine, but um, I'd rather do it today than on market day where I'm busy. Um, and then this is the pea. This is perfect size right now to go into the tray. You can put them in there younger if you want. Um, or you don't have to sprout them before you put them in the trays. I like to sprout mine before I put them in the flats. All right, so it's about uh, 12.30 right now and I just finished getting all of the sunflowers um, into their flats and the peas. So I use 540 grams of peas and that yields me um, five 10 by 20 flats. And then for the sunflowers I also use 540 grams and that yields me nine 10 by 20 flats. Um, and I've just figured this calculation out just off of trial and error. So I'm just filling up my totes here. I've got another one there. And a curious nosy dog there. And those are my uh, totes I'll be using to start harvesting. Um, so I'm just gonna fill these up and then continue. Um, avocado toast. So I just spread some avocado. I put a little lemon. buckwheat microgreens and that's it all right so I'm in the car and I've got my totes here and um, I brought two and I'm not gonna be harvesting from my second garden I'm gonna only be harvesting from the community garden today um, I might have to do some maintenance there I haven't been there in about um, two weeks so I really don't know what it looks like um, I'm pretty sure my squash are all dead, um, but we'll see. Um, so this is going to be like a first walkthrough for me. All right, so everything's looking pretty good. I kind of figured everything would do good after the rain. Now I just need to harvest, especially my first pot looks really good. Over here. Just like bursting. Got lots of kale to pick. Garden I'm picking at 
Vegetables need to go in the water right away. Um, everything I pick has got to be washed. All I do is I just submerge it, that's it, and wash it. Just get any kind of dirt off, and then I put it in the next, next tote. Nothing fancy about this, just water and something to hold your greens in. And this water is really cold. You want to use cold, cold water. If you have a well and you're tapping into it, that's even better. But I just use filtered water. So you want to make sure the water is cold. If it's hot, maybe add some ice. But washing your greens in cold water is super important. Um, and then next, this is going to be my mix. So I pick it and I mix it. And then I'm going to wash it as well. going to go out and pick some more kale and this is okay if it sits here the water is cold um, and then um, pick more kale and then I got to spin it which this is my first time doing because I have an awesome restaurant grade uh, salad spinner right, so one thing about using a salad spinner I used to work in restaurants so I know how to use this spinner um, is you don't want to overfill it you know, you just want to do a little bit at a time. So like, you don't want to jam it with stuff because it's not going to get, it's not going to get spin properly. And you want to be on a, on a flat surface like I am right here. And then you just hold on to it. super happy with that um, so it'll take me a couple times so now what I'm doing is just portioning out the uh, kale I, I, if I brought rubber bands with me to the garden I would have portioned then washed them as they're a portion, it would have saved me some time, but I didn't bring any rubber bands with me. So, um, so now I'm going to portion my kale mix, which I put into plastic bags. Um, people don't like plastic, that's okay at the farmer's market. Um, I can pour it into their own reusable bags. I'm totally cool with that and then I can reuse this. Um, so the, I don't measure out the kale. I just like I eyeball it. Um, I used to use bigger bags but now I'm using these smaller bags. It's still the same amount. Um, these are bakery and food service bags. Um, they are five inches by three and a half inches by 13 inches in length um and i get you get 250 per case so basically all i do is i just i put some in here And that's about right. I'll put this little guy in there. So people like to just grab this and go, which I don't, you know, that's cool with me. I like that. I get to mix all different types of kales into one, which works out. Beautiful, beautiful purple leaf. Like, it's so dark. Awesome. All of the bagged kales are ready. The bundles are ready. I got the radishes washed. They're looking gorgeous. Now I'm just gonna go put them in the fridge. All right, so I pretty much finished my harvest. It was quite simple, quite easy today. Um, 
in the winter time in the cooler months it's always much easier to harvest and my lettuce isn't ready yet so when my lettuce is ready it's gonna take me longer to pick it wash it clean it pack it all that stuff but today was really simple I didn't pack I didn't um, harvest everything from my community garden because um, my Friday market isn't my strongest one so I know even if I were to go there with everything just tables stacked it's not all gonna sell and I really don't want to waste it um, but um, let me show you guys how I pick and store my celery and how I actually take it at the to this the is my celery and um, I'm keeping it in water overnight and I'll actually store it like this at the farmers market um, I find that it just stays fresher this way than cutting it and putting it in the fridge um, I'll just rubber band it or tie it up and portion it out tomorrow when I get to the farmers market um, because I have about an hour to set up and that's plenty of time for me to get everything going um, so yeah and I don't harvest the bottoms I harvest single leaves single stems so I can keep the celery going all year round hey you guys so it is nighttime right now um, and I'm going to load the truck for the farmers market I'm not gonna load the produce, um, but I'm just gonna be loading like my tables and canopy and things like that. About 6.30 and I'm just starting to load the truck. Um, I'm just gonna set the camera down so you guys can see a little bit of that. I mean, it's not really anything special. I just put the microgreen flats in the back of the bed. So just headed to the farmer's market. Um, this market, uh, I don't have to take the freeway to, so that's nice. Um, any other markets I work or have worked in the past, I've, um, I've always had to take the freeway. Um, so yeah, sorry about not filming me putting the microgreens in the back. I'm actually running a little bit behind this morning um, I don't know in the winter for me let me know how it is for you guys for me in the winter it's really hard to get out of bed because I'm like warm and comfortable and it's just harder for me to get out of bed especially when I know it's dark and cold outside
you don't have nothing in your phone like that software. All right, you guys. So I'm pretty much done. It's almost time for, to leave the farmer's market. And it might rain. Looks like the rain is coming. So the last thing I'm doing before the farmer's market ends is filling out my load sheet and this will vary on the farmer's market. Um, each farmer's market will charge a different percentage, maybe they won't even charge a percentage. Um, but yeah, so whatever sales I make, I keep track throughout the market um, and then I just do the percentage at the very end of the farmer's market. This is the last thing I do before I can leave. I just wanted to close out the farmer's market video and um, I did do like an outro but um, the camera was way too shaky in the car so I ended up just deleting it but a few things I just wanted to say that I do at the farmer's market that I don't mention is I always bring my own uh, breakfast I bring lunch if I can remember to or I have time to prepare it and I also bring my own coffee. Uh, doing those things helps me save a lot of money um, because it's very, very tempting to see all these awesome other food vendors at the farmer's market and I just wanna buy everything. But unfortunately, I can't personally. Um, I can save money if I bring my own things to the farmer's market. I didn't really get any footage of the farmer's market at the farmer's market of me like talking to customers and selling stuff. I just didn't feel comfortable uh, filming customers and just, you know, random people in general. Um, but if you have any specific questions about the farmer's market, about permits, um, licenses, or how to even start selling at the farmer's market, uh, who do you have to contact and certificates and all that stuff, uh, let me know in the comments down below and I can help you out to the best of my ability. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, maybe I can film like more at at uh, my second farmer's market maybe that'll, that'll be like part two to this video i'm not sure yet but um thank you guys all for watching and i hope you guys have a great holiday season happy gardening